So I'm not entirely sure that I'm thrilled with the, the new trend that Epiphone's coming out with here. Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to Real Guitar Talk. This one's kind of a, a news update almost, or a response to current events, we'll say. But uh, many of you have seen that Epiphone is coming out with some pretty high-end lines of Gibson Historic Instruments. And from what I've played, and uh, many of you saw I did uh, a review of their new Firebirds on loan, from what I've played, they're really exceptional instruments. They're very, very good guitars, very well put together. You know, a couple of little things that I wish were different, but for the most part, it's something I can't complain about, just a really good guitar. But they're extremely expensive. And what I'm seeing now with Epiphone uh, announcing a new lineup, which included an SG Les Paul Custom and an ES guitar, a Les Paul, what I'm seeing is this new trend of Epiphone putting out these really high-end copies of Gibsons at really prices that I don't think they should be that aren't just accounted for by inflation. Obviously everything is a lot more expensive nowadays, but considering how good and how inexpensive some lower Epiphone guitars are, there's quite a jump here, and I can't help but wonder if this is a big cash grab. Again, the Firebirds were great. I, I can't say don't play them. I, I wouldn't be in any way mortified to be on stage with one. They sound awesome. They played awesome. You know, they had the Indian Laurel Fingerboard, which I wasn't thrilled about. But in general, I thought they were really good guitars and some of the best Gibson-inspired Epiphone guitars that I've ever played. But the price was just... And that, this was the response from everybody, too. Just like, oh, but that price tag. You know, the, the Firebird 5 was like $1,600, $1,700. And I think that's is sort of shooting beyond the range. Now, obviously, a lot of other companies are putting out lower-level stuff at higher prices now. I also mentioned, like, the Fender Ventera 2 guitars, which are the Made in Mexico Classic Series. They're over $1,000 now. So it's not necessarily inconsistent with other companies, but what I don't like that I see is that they're kind of replacing some of what Gibson should be doing at a more reasonable price point on their own. Now right now it seems that Gibson's kind of offering their standard line of guitars, which certainly have some vintage inspiration, right? Gibson, you know, they do their modern stuff, but they, you know, if you get a Gibson Les Paul standard, the 50s or the 60s, they're, they're a really solid vintage inspired Les Paul. There's not too much else going on with it. But if you want something that's like really historic, when you jump up, you're jumping way up to like the Murphy Lab stuff now, or the Custom Shop, which is just worlds more expensive. And right now, Gibson does not even make their own regular line of Firebirds. It's either an Epiphone Firebird, or you're jumping up to the expensive custom shop Murphy Lab. I don't want to see Gibson abandoning this more reasonably priced territory and just sort of ceding it to Epiphone. Now, some people have mentioned, some very devoted Epiphone fans have mentioned, but wait, Epiphone was was a high-end American company before Gibson bought them, so it's really not unreasonable for Epiphone to be putting out guitars at a higher price point. The first part's true, the second part's not. Here's the thing. Yes, I would absolutely love it if Epiphone really opened up a dedicated USA shop that was making vintage reissues of their original guitars before Gibson bought them. The Zephyr, the Sorrento, all kinds of other ones. They're fantastic guitars that Epiphone made. They were a high-end archtop maker, and I wish that Epiphone was doing more to kind of honor that legacy. Then they got bought by Gibson. They were still making high-end guitars for quite a while. You know, in the early days, the obviously the Beatles and the Stones were still playing them. And it wasn't until later that they kind of got relegated to more of the like lower-end Gibson copies. The trouble with what they're doing now is they, first of all, it's all import stuff. I, I don't want to get into a big import argument, but you know, for, for better or worse, it's it's import. And we've never seen prices like this for Epiphone copies of Gibsons, right? You know. I have no qualms with the USA Casino being somewhere around $3,000. Now, are, are tons of people going to buy it at that price? No, but that's another talk for another time. It's an import copy of a higher-end brand that's coming in for, you know, creeping up on $2,000. And I don't think that's really good, and I think Epiphone is going to lose a lot of sales of really good guitars because they're just charging too much, particularly because their lower end guitars are so good. I bought my daughter uh, an Epiphone SG Standard for her birthday, and it's a really good guitar. 
and it they come in at about 500 new, something around there. And then if you jump up to like the historic ones, it's quite a jump. And yeah, they're good guitars, but you're not getting that much more than the lower end one. And I a lot of people mentioned that the regular line Epiphone Firebird is something like $650, which is totally reasonable for that guitar. Then you jump up to $1,700. Now it's not reasonable, even if it's a better produced guitar. Now Fender has always had a little bit of a better handle on this and I, I don't this is not like a fanboy thing because I actually have quite a few qualms with Fender and, and what they're doing right now but one of the things I've always liked that Fender did was they had very kind of distinct levels you know like you could get the Squire classic vibe you could get the Mexican classic series it was the classic series then the classic player series and there was the Baja thrown in now it's the Ventera then you got up to like the regular level Stratocasters, which might have had some modern appointments, but they they weren't you know that far off the beaten path. Or I should the models in general. And then you got up to the American Vintage, or you know then they did American Original, and but but basically then you had a a reissue, a historic reissue that was still reasonably priced, and then you got up to the custom shop level. And it seems like Gibson's just abandoning a lot of that in favor of Epiphone doing it, sending it overseas, and then charging oodles and oodles of money for really really high-end custom shop work and I don't think this is a good business plan even if the guitars that they're making are great and Gibson since their changeover in like 2017 when they went bankrupt and they kind of restructured the company Gibson is making really good guitars I really don't like seeing people hate on Gibson quality wise because I think since that changeover their guitars have really been good Epiphones as well Stuff before that, major quality concerns. Stuff after that, I think they really corrected a lot of things, except for kind of the models they're offering and the prices. But that's what I think. Let us know what you think. Are you kind of on the same page with me? Do you think that I'm totally crazy? I am totally crazy, but I think in this case I happen to be right. Let us know what you think in the comments. I'm Jack Fawcett. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.